Welcome to Record, Mix and Release, a YouTube series which takes you through the process of recording a song from beginning to end in your home studio and releasing it to the world. And in this episode, we're going to be recording acoustic guitar. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. And welcome to the fifth episode in this series where we record, mix and release a song to the world from a home studio. And in this episode, we're gonna be replacing the guide guitar part with the final guitar parts for this song, including the main guitar, plus some additional guitars for the chorus to add width and impact. So stick around for all of that. Now, if you wanna be notified about the other episodes in this series, or indeed other content from this channel, all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plug-in reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about those other other episodes. Now let's get on and record some guitars. So I actually prefer not to record in my main studio, but instead I run cables down the hall to the theatre room of my house and do my tracking there. Firstly, because I like the acoustics of this room, and secondly, it's nice to be away from my main PC. Finally, but importantly, I just feel very comfortable when I'm recording in there. It gets me in a really nice frame of mind. However, it doesn't come without its challenges. So the main issue with recording in a separate room when you're both the artist and the engineer is controlling both your DAW and your audio interface. Now the first part of this problem is rather easily solved because there's lots of apps available for both Android and iPhone which allow you to control your DAW over your local Wi-Fi network. I had to use an app called TouchDoor and I'll put a link to my video about that in the description down below. Now the second part of the problem is not quite so easily solved. I use the Presonus Studio 192 audio interface and that does allow me to control almost every aspect of it via an app on my iPad over the Wi-Fi network in my house. Now most audio interfaces do not allow you to do this and it's one of the reasons why I chose this interface. And of course, I made a video about that as well, another link in the description down below. Now if your audio interface doesn't have this feature, then you will have to make do with going between the rooms to adjust the input gain. It's not ideal, but I did it for years and you get better at it over time. So let's take a moment to talk about gain levels, and this applies to most instruments which I record. You'll often hear me say that I aim for a peak level of around about minus 12 dB. Now that gives me lots and lots of headroom on the track. I'm absolutely nowhere near clipping. And then I find as I add more and more tracks to the song, I'm also nowhere near clipping in the master bus as well. Now I aim for an average level of around about minus 18 dB. The reason for that is that many plugins which are based upon old analog gear are optimized for those analog effects to kick in at around about minus 12 dB. So that's why I try and get it to about that level. Now I must stress these are absolute approximations. Don't sit for hours trying to get these exactly right. Most often you won't, and there's no need to, because you can make adjustments to these levels anyway, later on at the gain staging part of mixing. I'll be covering that in another episode. So if you do happen to be running between rooms to get your levels right, don't stress about getting them absolutely perfectly right according to these kind of rules. Now, the only thing I will say is you must not allow it to clip. That means allowing it to go up to and above zero dB. That's where we get digital clipping and it's a very unwanted sound, which we cannot fix later during gain staging. So it's best to get it right now because otherwise you'll probably end up having to re-record the track. So before we start recording, I'd like to talk about microphone choice and positioning. Now a really good choice is a trusty old Shaw SM57. This is a dynamic microphone and is fairly inexpensive. If you've got one of these kicking around, they're really, really good for recording acoustic guitars, especially if that guitar is in the mix with lots of other instruments. So definitely consider that one. The other choice I'd recommend is a large diaphragm condenser microphone, something like this Rode NT1A. This will give a much richer sound, I feel, than the SM57 on most occasions. And if you've got one of these kicking around, it's your main studio mic, then definitely go ahead and use this for recording acoustic guitar. 
Now I have actually gone for a stereo pair of Rode NT5 small diaphragm condenser microphones. And the reason for that is in this song particularly, the guitar is very, very exposed. It's actually the only instrument at the beginning of the song along with the vocal. And I find that when that's the case, it's really nice to get a stereo recording of the guitar. It sounds much more expansive, much richer, much more pleasant to listen to. And it's the only instrument you're really listening to. So that's why I have chosen this setup for this song. But if you don't have a stereo pair of mics or you don't have more than one mic, it's absolutely fine to go ahead and record just with one mic. Now the next thing I'd like to talk about is mic placement. In videos all across YouTube, you're going to hear people say to set the microphone up around about uh, six to eight inches away from the 12th fret, sometimes 12 inches away from the 12th fret. And this would be a very, very good rule if everything was always the same. If the guitar was always the same, if the strings were always the same, if the room was always the same, and if the song was always the same, and you always wanted an exactly the same sounding guitar, then you should definitely stick to that rule. But you can probably gather from what I'm saying that that's most often not the case. So I want you to remember that that's a starting point. It's a very, very good starting point, and it's where you should start and adjust from there. Get your headphones on, listen to the guitar, and move the microphone around until you get the sound that you're looking for. There's probably only really one rule, and that's don't point the microphone directly at the sound hole. You most often won't get the kind of sound that you want by doing that. So with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and actually record the guitar part for this song. Wish me luck. So the idea of the extra guitars is to add energy and width to the chorus section of the songs. And the way I'm going to do that is to record two separate guitar pieces, both identically played, but I'm going to pan one hard left in the mix and one hard right. And that really helps to add a lot of width to the sound. Now, don't think that you can just record it once and then play one in the left channel and one in the right channel. It doesn't work like that. You do actually need to record them separately. Now, the other thing that's happening here is I'm just using one single large diaphragm condenser microphone, my trusty old NT1A from Rode. And that's because I'm only going to be playing each of these guitars through one channel so I don't need a stereo recording. Now the other thing I'm doing is I'm actually using a different guitar. Now you don't have to use a different guitar if you've only got one guitar that's fine but just to give a bit of difference in the sound I've changed to a different guitar and I'm actually going to be strumming this with the plectrum rather than picking it with my fingers this time. Another tip is to actually change the sound between the left and the right channel of the guitar slightly either with a different microphone position or you can do it with EQ later on in the mixing stage. So I'm going to go ahead and record these guitar parts now, but what I'm going to do for you in the next little segment is actually play the original guitar part and then I'm going to blend in these left and right channels of guitar so that you can hear the difference that they make to the chorus section of the song. So wish me luck. Thank you so much for watching this episode in the series. In the next episode, we'll be miking up and recording a cajon. Now, if you liked this video, then you can show your appreciation by hitting the like button. It really does help me out. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about other episodes and content from this channel. And I'll see you in the next video.